What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 116 and we're starting today's lift off by changing Sam Greenwood's position from centre forward to striker as we now changed our formation from 4-3-3 false 9 to 4-2-3-1. We want Greenwood to be an out and out striker, it'll only take him 6 weeks and that will do it. And we also start today's episode off with this. The draw for the Champions League group stage or in our first year with Real Madrid. We have got, in Europe's big competition, Leverkusen, Benfica and Spartak Moscow, as Milan and Brentford have got themselves in the same group. Can you believe it? What did I say in the Champions League final when I saw the Brentford won the Europa League? Oh, please, FIFA gods, please, please, can you put Brentford in my Champions League group next season, please? Lads, I left Milan. I appreciate it, but I left Milan. I'm at Real Madrid now. Oh, I can't believe it. They met in the Super Cup. Brentford won it 2-1. <laughs> How typical is that? And then they meet in the group as well. But yeah, we've got Leverkusen, Benfica and Spartak Moscow. And with all due respect to those teams there, I think we are definitely firm favourites. Now, it is worth pointing out, last season of AC Milan, we had Benfica in our Champions League group and we drew with them away from home in Portugal. But I still feel as though we should be firm favourites to top that group. Definitely getting through is the bare minimum expectation. But I was certainly going for top spot in that group and trying to do it undefeated as well. Just excited to get Real Madrid back in the Champions League last year. They're in the Europa Conference League and only got to the semis. They were shocking in Europe as bad as they were domestically last season as well. So this season, as we know, Florentino Perez is expecting a much better season from me at the helm and our new look Real Madrid side. So for the first and only game of today's episode, Lovante here at the Bernabeu. Now, we won our first two games, but as I mentioned, despite back-to-back -back clean sheets, we didn't really play our best football. So in this game, I felt like I needed to finally show that I'm the right man for the job here. Ansu Fati got his second in two to open the scoring, and in 23 minutes in, we were bag our, uh, bag our second through Roberto Gutierrez. But look at this for a run, by the way. That was absolutely brilliant there. Duke and his man going from left to right, and a great time ball from Dominic as well, the Hungarian. It helps us get the second goal of the game. So 2-0 Real Madrid. To be fair to Levante, though, they would hit back. Four and a half minutes before the break. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Is that Brian Brobby or Tony Yaboa? What a goal there from Brobby as he smacks it in off the other side of the crossbar. That was one of those aesthetically pleasing goals, you know. There's something so satisfying about seeing the ball get cannoned in off the underside of the crossbar. If you don't believe me, after you watch this video, search for Tony Yaboa goals on YouTube. YouTube and you'll see what I mean. He was the master of it. So yeah, Real Madrid 2, Levante 1, our first goal conceded as Real Madrid manager and it was an absolute banger from Brobby. So Levante half deficit get back in the game. Having said that, whilst defensively we weren't going to get three straight clean sheets in a row, I knew we'd get a couple more goals in this game and we would. Right before the break, final kick of the first half, Roberto bags his first brace as Real Madrid captain and leader. Makes it 3-1, restores our two goal cushion and in the second half we're not too much going on. Four minutes to go, a chance to make it for Mikel Moreno with a brilliant through ball to Ansu Fati, who leaves Marquez in the dust, runs through one-on-one, -on -one, and it's the coolest of finishes from the former Barcelona youngster. Fati with the finish, just like Roberto, bags a brace in a 4-1 victory, and this was more like it. I would have loved third straight, if our third straight clean sheet wasn't to be, however, I think my best game so far as Real Madrid head coach. 4-1 the final score, Definitely deserved to win there. And great to see Gutierrez and Fatty both bag braces. I think this season we are going to score a lot of goals with Torres on the right, Fatty on the left, and Gutierrez being supported by Dominic, the Hungarian, in behind as well. So as transfer deadline day would come round, as you could see after a crazy rebuild at the Bernabeu, we only had £18 million to work with. So I didn't really think we were going to do anything on transfer deadline day. We had a bit for Sergio Arribas, West Ham wanted to take him to uh, London. We of course said no as a squad CM, I like him. However, as I was running down the clock on deadline day, not expecting to do anything, with four hours to go, we had a bid. And it came from Spurs 
For Dominic, yes, the former RB Leipzig Hungarian playmaker wanted by Antonio Conte, and he's valued at 73 million. They offered us 86 rated Bubakar Camera, and Dominic bagged two assists in that win over Levante there. But I knew I could get over 100 million for him. So I asked for 110 million from Nuno, expecting to do a little bit of back and forth. And Nuno said, all right. And I was like, ah, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> It's one of those times where you like put a put a really big counter off and think that'll be a back and forth, but the AI club just shocks you and says, "Yeah, go on." And fair enough, 110 mil, and you see a flash up there on the right. Dominic is off to North London for 110 million. Pounds. I wasn't planning to sell him on transfer deadline day. He was going to be my Elias Timmermans this year. But the deal to me was too good to turn down. He's in the prime of his career. He is an incredible playmaker in this year's FIFA. And he can also operate as an inside forward as well. He's got great stats to do that. However... I felt as though selling him wouldn't be a bad move because it would raise our bank balance up. So we rejected it for Valverde here to over two, uh, sorry, 100 million pounds. It's now about 120 million pounds in total. And that would give me enough money to bring in a replacement for Dominic and another Spanish player as well as we continue to assemble this Spanish core. And I had two players that I was targeting Brian Gill, who's, gonna, who's now gone to Everton, and also Nico Melamed, the former Espanyol midfielder, who's now at the Olympia Stadion for Hertha Berlin. He was the one I wanted, 86 rated, 27 year old left midfielder, but as we know, can play through the middle as a playmaker, and we negotiated an 80 million pound deal, plus a 5% sell on clause as well, with the Germans, for Nico Melamed to return to La Liga. Yeah, from Espanyol to Hertha Berlin and now to the Bernabeu. A five-year, £150,000 a week deal. And Nico Melamed is our next man in at the Bernabeu. A massive £110 million sale of a star player who I wasn't looking to sell. But a replacement signed for £30 million less. And whilst he is a rating lower, him being Spanish helps the Spanish core. And I don't think it'll be long until I can turn him into 87 overall. Again, he's an LM by trade. Well, you look at his stats here. His dribbling is amazing. He's got 92 dribbling, 88 ball control, 84 agility, 84 balance, 82 long pass, 83 vision, 77 short pass. Look, this guy to me is rapid. He could easily play as an inside forward, as an understudy for Ansu Fati. But to me, playing through the heart of this team with the dribbling, the agility, the pace and the vision, the passing skills he's got, I think he'll be a great replacement for Dominic. Yes, you'll look at it on paper and say he's a rating lower, but think about it. He was £30 million cheaper. He's a Spanish player to help with the call at the border asking for, and it means our budget is higher now because he costs £30 million less, which means in January, if we want to make some moves, we got 35 million in the budget already. So to me, that was a really good piece of business. It might look bad on paper, but I think going forward and aligning with the club's philosophy of wanting more Spanish players, I think we've done a good bit of business there. So there we go, transfer deadline day would end and after a crazy summer window and our first at the Bernabeu, we spent over half a billion rebuilding this Real Madrid team. But I love how it's shaping up. We sold some seniors, and to be fair, a couple of players in their prime, such as Dominic uh, and, and uh, also Morgan Jackson as well. But you look at the young Spaniards coming in on free transfers to fill out the squad with potential. The stars getting signed, Melamed, Porro, Gutierrez, Castaneda, Ledesma as well. I've got to say, I love how this Real Madrid team is looking now. As I run you through it, there is so much more potential here. The board said we need to get younger. It was an aging team. Look at the amount of young talent we've got here with Real Madrid and so many of the players with potential tags as well, particularly those Spanish freebies coming in as well and Manuel Neuer's regen, lest we forget to. We've made the squad thicker. We've added eight more players to it. We're up to 29-man squad now, whereas we were 21 at the start of the season. We've got a couple of great regens. We've got some new Galacticos in as well. And Roberto Gutierrez, the best striker in the world, the hero of the save, leading the line as new Real Madrid captain as well. I give myself a 10 out of 10 for this summer transfer window. I love how this Real Madrid team is looking. 
and we still have some pennies remaining for when the January transfer window comes around as well. This is a much better Real Madrid side, a much younger Real Madrid side, and they've got their identity back as well. Three straight wins in La Liga. It's a perfect start for the new Galacticos, but there's a long, long way to go as we try and restore Real Madrid to former glory. But that will end season sort of Korea, my guys. Massive thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed the video. Please drop a like. Most love to you all. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode of Korea, featuring our first El Clasico and our Champions League group opener as well. Very soon.